जननी शारदा देवी रामकृष्ण जगद्गु पाद पद्मे तयो श्रीवा प्रणमा मुहुर्मु devotion of the ever perfect is not like the ordinary devotion that one acquires as a result of strenuous spiritual discipline a man acquires a little devotion by through severe austerities strenuous spiritual disciplines ritualistic devotion consists of repeating name of god and performing worship in a prescribed manner there are scriptural injunctions according to which we all follow the ritualistic worship and all that repeating the name of god and performing worship it is like crossing a rice field in a roundabout way along the bark again it is like reaching a nearby village by boat in a roundabout way along a winding river a river is winding i am going through or in a field paddy field and all that a bond will be there little high elevated on that people walk and to cross the field we walk through that it is like passing over that it will be round about either case it will be round about one does not follow the injunctions of ceremonial worship when one develops raga bhakti when one loves god as one so then it is crossing rice field after harvest you don't have to walk along the bark you can go straight across the field in any direction you are going about because that rice field it contains water you cannot keep the leg in the in between you have to if you keep your leg will get in inside what is there and um, mud will be it will be muddy field you cannot cross through the field but you have to cross over the bound across but when the harvest is over the field is dry you can walk any way in any direction freely without going through the mounds hmm then cross the you don't have to walk along the bark you can go straight across the field in any direction when <coughs> country is flooded with deep, deep with water one does not have to follow the winding river then the fields are deep under water you can row the boat straight to the village hmm. the we are doing the there are two things in our sadhana one is we the end and one is the path now in the path we get lost our eyes get fixed on the path rather than the goal <coughs> most of the sadhanas that we do Hmm. There are ideals. Ideals cannot be lived. We cannot live an ideal. For example, Aham Brahmasmi. Aham Brahmasmi. We cannot live. I am not this body and mind. I cannot live that way. But I rose, raise myself to such a level of consciousness that I am finding oneness everywhere because. the subjective 
subjectivity and objectivity has dissolved and one existence remains the subjectivity has gone objectivity has gone <coughs> in that state i see am brahmasmi am brahmasmi is not practiced but with, with that as the ideal i raise my consciousness to that level that it manifests in me world is unreal god alone is real <coughs> when we say this world is temporary passing events it is the world is illusory but god alone is real and eternal when we say we cannot live it hmm god alone is real world is illusory can i s- Uh, I am eating, drinking. Hunger is there. Pains are there. Bereavements are there. Joys are there. How can I say which I am experiencing directly? How can I say it is just appearance only? Uh, reality is not there. Like dream. In dream, I experience the dream. As long as dream, I am in dream. Dream is real. but in dream i cannot say dream is unreal mind alone is real which has created this dream world my that mind is alone real the mind which has taken the dream world form that mind is real the dream world is a just a illusionary existence it is true when you wake up but when you again enter into dream you cannot live it oh this is all illusion you don't feel you don't experience it is real you experience like that in this world i don't see the world as illusory i am experiencing it i am participating it but we hear constantly the god alone is real the whole thing is god who has become this universe and all these things are real like the mind which has become the dream world is alone real dream world is a just illusory like that i don't see god alone is real i don't even know what god is and this world is illusory how to live it i raise myself through sadhana to such a elevated height that i see oh that is i wake up from dream like that i wake up from this world to the higher level of consciousness then i see oh all this was god it was because i identified with this body i was seeing a world because i identified with the dream body i was seeing a dream world and it was real to me i am identified with physical body so this world is visible and looking real but it is all god one has become many so this awareness comes when i transcend but the ideal is uh, the world is illusory and god alone is real is it but to live is not ideal is not lived ideal is attained ideal is made to manifest in me through the sadhana now sadhana consists of slowly begin with the spiritual practices do japa read scriptures all this if i concentrate on scriptures and go on revolving the do japa life long i go on doing japa uh, i go on um, doing worship every day without it i hold my attention is uh, how should i do worship is these words are correct is this chanting is correct is this ritualistic methods methodology which he has prescribed is correct i go on concentrating i lose the goal the more i concentrate on the path i lose the goal there are so many pitfalls that are told in the be careful uh, sadhu savdhan so many times it is being told and that that is if i concentrate on that i lose the slowly goal the i must understand oh all these are meant to reach that utilize it to reach that not get stuck there so most of the sadhakas do this error of 
concentrating so much on the minute details of the scriptural injunctions rather than the goal that I have to reach. <coughs> So, without intense attachment, this passionate love, one cannot realize God. When fields are deep under water and water is flooded, you can row your boat straight to the village. So, yeah, um, I was going round and round to reach a place when through the river. Now, river also is flooded with water, the land also flooded with water. Now I can go to any place because everything is under water. I can row the boat anywhere to anywhere, anytime. So like that, the when goal is reached, you see it is easy to... <coughs> Without this intense attachment, this passionate love, one cannot realize God. <coughs> Contemplation on goal, the ideal enters our consciousness, enters our awareness, inner awareness is filled with the divine, external duties go on, sadhanas are to open up this inner field of divinity. For me to reach that all this, it is like climbing a ladder to go up. I cannot hold on to the ladder, but I have to utilize the ladder to go up. And that is the, in then through all this sadhana, two things constantly coming with us is, one is constant unbroken memory, smarana and prema, love. Love of God and the constant remembrance of God. You must feel the living, even doing japa, there must be love. Lovingly you do japa and feeling the living presence of God with you. You are doing dhyana, you are doing worship, you will be doing with smarana, feeling complete living presence of God. You are worshipping, you will feel clear presence of God there. You are offering water, you are offering fruit, everything, your clear presence you are feeling, living presence of God there. And with great love you are doing, then you will reach. All these are just to express your love, to bring constant awareness of God in you. These are the two things that lead, not the ritualistic part. So... <coughs> Amrita, one of the devotees is asking, Sir, how do you feel in Samadhi? This is a rare type of question. Usually what we see, how will we enter into Samadhi? But how do you feel in Samadhi? Master, you may have heard that the cockroach by intense, intense, intently meditating on Brahmara is transformed into Brahmara. Do you know how I feel then? I feel like fish released from a pond into the water of Ganges. <coughs> Everything is limited in which we are. My mind is limited, my senses are limited. My understanding is limited. All my aspects of existence is limited. I am limited by form. I am limited by time. I am limited by space. Everything is limited, limited, limited. With Samadhi, there is expansion of consciousness, expansion of heart, expansion of mind to maximum level. Samadhi is a state where all limitations break. I enter into a higher level of consciousness where all limitations have broken, all differences have dissolved. It is like 
a bird flying freely in the sky released from a cage. The bird was kept in cage all the time. It is released. How it feels free to move about. A fish which is kept in a pot is released into the river. How it joyfully it feels. How freedom. The main important part is freedom. From the cage when the bird is released, it is free, freed. It has no more limitations. When the fish is released from a pot into the river, it is uh, attained freedom. This kind of spiritual freedom, existential freedom. <coughs> Amrita, don't you feel at that time even a trace of ego? Mm. Mm. The sense of I, the seat of ego, our whole existence, bodily existence, then the pranic existence, energy level, then the senses, the karmendriya and jnanendriya, then mind, manas, then comes buddhi. Ego is a part of this buddhi. Buddhi extends deep up to my deep sleep level of depth. Buddhi doesn't end with sense, bodily existence ends. Energies end. Uh, karmendriya end. No more action when you enter inside. Senses continue through the all these, continue through the mind also. Mind with five senses is another sheath of mind. Manomaya kosha. Beyond that is Vijnanamaya kosha. Intellect with five senses. There also, the intellect goes deeper, deeper, deeper. It enters Vijnanamaya Kosha. When it enters Anandamaya Kosha, there also the I continues to exist. It is from the Muladhara of the bodily material level. It moves to the Anahata. In Anahata, it rests the twelve petal lotus at Anatha, there the ego remains. You will have it in waking state, dreaming state, and as it reaches the deep sleep, the ego is disappearing. It is entering into dormant state. So there, up to the, in Samadhi, Savikalpa Samadhi, when you enter into Vijnana may kosha through meditation, we waking with all when you enter into Vijnana may kosha, crossing the barrier of mind, entering into the field of knowledge. There you will see the God with form, and the form also start dissolving as you go ahead, ahead. So in Ananda may kosha, there won't be form. When we sleep. We, in the Anandamaya Kosha, we leave our own knowledge, intelligence, identity, everything in seed form and enter the Absolute which pervades the universe. So ego remains even in the Savikalpa Samadhi of the Jiva in which he has transcended the barrier of mind and entered the field of knowledge, jnana, vijnana maya, they are the mind, intellect and buddhi, mind merges in the intellect, intellect continues with the sense organs to see the form of God and the sense organs also merge when it goes beyond the vijnana maya to ananda maya where it, the whole senses also merge in the buddhi. Buddhi continues with the ego to experience the nirvikalpa samadhi, the absolute, the in, in, uh, eternal existence, 
ದಿ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದ ಸಾಗರ ದೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ದೇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಡಿಸಾಲ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಈಗೋ ಈಗೋ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಮರ್ಜಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮರ್ಜಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಆಬ್ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಸೊ ಈಗೋ ಎಂಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ನಿರ್ವಿಕಲ್ಪ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಡೀಪ್ ಸ್ಲೀಪ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಆಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಡು ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಯು ಫೀಲ್ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಈವನ್ ಎ ಟ್ರೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಎಸ್ ಜನರಲಿ ಎ ಲಿಟ್ಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ ರಿಮೇನ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಹವ್ ಎವರ್ ಹಾರ್ಡ್ ಯು ಮೇ ರಬ್ ಎ ಗ್ರೇನ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೋಲ್ಡ್ ಎಗೇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೈಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೋನ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಎ ಬಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ರಿಮೇನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಎಗೇನ್ ಟೇಕ್ ದಿ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಬಿಗ್ ಫೈರ್ ದ ಈಗೋ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಐ ಲೂಸ್ ಔಟರ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಬಟ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಜನರಲಿ ಕೀಪ್ಸ್ ಎ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಟ್ರೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಈಗೋ ಇನ್ ಮೀ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಕಮ್ಯೂನಿಯನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಗೋ ಇಸ್ ಹೈಲಿ ರಿಫೈನ್ಡ್ ಈಗೋ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಪ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಫಿಲ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಫಿಲ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಬ್ಲಿಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಪ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದ ದಟ್ ಈ ಗೋ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ರಿಮೇನ್ ದಿ ಡ್ಯುಯಾಲಿಟಿ ರಿಮೇನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ದಿ ಜೀವ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೆಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸಸ್ ಸೊ ದೇಟ್ ವಿ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಐ ರಿಮೇನ್ಸ್ ಟಿಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ one with the absolute in where in the nirvikalpa samadhi where there is no duality anymore one sachidananda sagara ocean of bliss peace love absolute without a triad the experiencer experienced and experienced are merging in one existence so this experience there the ego completely merges the how the shri ram krishna is bringing a devotee to ask that question and present the truth to the world again sometimes god effaces even that trace of i here that nirvikalpa then one experiences jada samadhi or nirvikalpa samadhi this is where the jiva crosses even the anandamaya kosha to enter the sachidananda sagara the i the self the atman is the same the brahman the absolute this objective ultimate you go on expand your consciousness go beyond the all limits to the cosmic and then beyond then you can see what is brahman the absolute in which universes appear and disappear so here that absolute existence same i see the same absolute existence when i turn inward and cross one by one layers annamaya pranamaya manomaya vijnanamaya and anandamaya also to reach the same eternal unchanging infinite existence of bliss peace love absolute the sachidananda sagara there the i the completely merges dissolves and again sometime god effaces even that trace of i then one experience of jada samadhi or nirvikalpa samadhi now you see shri ram krishna is presenting one thing um again sometimes god effaces that ego that the trace of that i god effaces why i don't say uh, my ego gets dissolved uh, i dissolve my there he brings shamkrishna brings god effaces a important expression because though we are one with god 
ultimately we don't get the power of god any time we are one with god but the power of god do not manifest in us the difference always remains the all powers of creation srishti sthiti pralaya does not come to me to give a mukti to a jiva a realized soul cannot give a mukti to a jiva cannot release a soul that much of his freedom of he is one with god in every aspect but he doesn't that is why he says god effaces the eye god keeps the eye because god remains god and i am released from the prakriti to enter into the eternal life in the absolute so i can merge in the absolute i can experience god with form i can be free from the nature forever and be in the ocean of bliss as bliss but i don't get the acquire the powers of god to create srishti sthiti pralaya the to create universe or universes or to destroy the universes i don't get that power of god to release a jiva from bondage i don't get that power then one experiences jada samadhi nirvikalp samadhi the experience cannot be described what it is je jane so jane it cannot be experienced what is it when there is duality there is no thing he is bliss being bliss he is floating in bliss the experience cannot be expressed if there is duality we can experience uh, explain something of it uh, where mind also do not go senses do not go nothing can go there or perceive i am myself in myself a salt dog went to measure the depth of a ocean but before it had gone far into the water it melted away it became entirely one with the water of the ocean then who was to come back and tell the ocean's depths how deep was ocean he went to measure the depth of the ocean is salt doll went to measure the depth of ocean as it got it got melted when he wanted to experience no the nirvikalpa samadhi a god with in its absolute existence he wanted to know the moment he started trying to enter into that state he dissolved same thing happens to us in deep sleep also when we try to enter into deep sleep what ex- we experience we do, do not know because we are not there anymore till i enter into deep sleep even in dream state their mind is there to understand what is happening what dream i am seeing i can come back and tell the dream but as i enter into the deeper i myself get lost i don't know what happens in the deep sleep i cannot come and tell so also in nirvikalpa the ultimate experience that we get we cannot know or see any more here we see our the present chapter the master's birthday celebration at dakshineshwar ends we enter into the next ninth chapter advice to the brahmos in the next class we will have that शांति 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 हरि ओम तत्सत श्रीरामकृष्णापणमस्तू